Let's begin part 2 of transform block where we'll be understanding some of the transform operations like get end of string transform, get reference identity attribute transform and few other transform operations. Now let's understand get end of string transform. Get end of string transform is used as an out of box rule transform provided through SailPoint's cloud services utility rule. This transforms allow you to get the rightmost n characters of the string. So we will be passing input either implicitly or explicitly and number of characters to retrieve as an input to this transform. And we will receive rightmost n characters of the string as an output. Let's understand this with an example. For example, an input ABCD1234 is passed to the transform with number of characters to return is 4. So we can get the output as 1234. As we understood get end of string transform, now let's understand how can we build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is get end of string transform and type is rule. It requires name of the referenced rule to be cloud services deployment utility and operation must be always be set to get end of string. So we are providing input in input attribute and number of characters as 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 is returned as an output which are last 4 characters from the specified string. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to required and optional attributes, type, name, attribute name, operation, number of characters are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and input are the optional attributes. As we understood about get end of string transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works and then we'll move to the next transform which is get reference identity attribute transform. Now let's see the demo of get end of string transform. We have already seen the JSON body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I'm going to apply this transform to last name attribute. So you can see last four characters are returned as output. Let's understand get reference identity attribute transform. This transform is used as an out of box rule transform provided through SailPoint's cloud services deployment utility rule. This transform allows you to get identity attribute of another user. So we will be specifying the UID of the user and the attribute name that need to be retrieved. Corresponding attribute value is retrieved as an output. So we can use manager keyword to look up the user's manager and then get the manager's identity attribute. Let's understand this with an example. So in this example, we are giving manager as UID and the attribute name is mail. So the manager's mail john.smith at the rate xyzexample.com is returned as output. As we understood get reference identity attribute transform. Now let's understand how can we build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is get reference identity attribute transform and type is rule. It requires name of the referenced rule to be cloud services deployment utility and operation must always be set to get reference identity attribute. So we need to provide the UID of the user whose identity attribute need to be retrieved. Here I have given manager as UID. So users manager details will be retrieved and the attribute name is email. So manager's email value will be retrieved. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide.
coming to required and optional attributes type name attributes name operation and uid are the required attributes requires periodic refresh is an optional attributes as we understood about get reference identity attribute transform let's have a quick demo on how this transform works and then we'll move to the next transform which is identity attribute transform now let's see the demo of get reference identity attribute transform we have already seen the json body of transform and we have provided input explicitly so let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output so i'm going to apply this transform to manage your mail attribute Let's see the output. So we can observe user's manager email address is returned. Let's understand identity attribute transform. Identity attribute transform is used to get the user's identity attribute value. We'll be providing the attribute name as input to the transform. Then its value will be returned. Let's understand this with an example. Consider the identity attribute employee type and its corresponding value employee. So if we pass the employee type to the identity attribute, then its value employee is returned as an output. As we understood the identity attribute transform, now let's understand how can we build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is identity attribute transform and type is identity attribute. We are trying to find the value for the identity attribute email. So we will be giving email to the name attribute and its corresponding value will be returned as output. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to required and optional attributes, type, name, and attribute name are required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and input are the optional attributes. As we understood about identity attribute transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works. And then we'll move to the next transform, which is index of transform. Now let's see the demo of identity attribute transform. We have already seen the JSON body of transform and we have provided the input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I'm going to apply this transform to last name attribute. So last name identity attribute is returned as output. Let's understand index of transform. Index of transform is used to find the index of specified substring. If the substring does not match with the input string, then it returns minus 1. If the substring occurs multiple times, then the first occurrence of the substring is considered and index value is returned. We will be providing the input string and the substring which you want to search for. Input is taken either implicitly or explicitly. We will get the location of a specified substring within an incoming value as an output. Let's understand this with an example. If ABC, ABC, ABC is passed as an input along with the substring P to the transform, then index 1 is returned as an output. As we can see, the first occurrence of B in the string is at index 1. As we understood the index of transform, now let's understand how can we build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format, where the name of the transform is index of transform 
and type is index of. Input is provided in input attribute and substring b is provided in the substring attribute to get the index. So the first occurrence of letter b is at index 1. So the value 1 is returned as an output. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to required and optional attributes, type, name and substring are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and input are the optional attributes. As we understood about index of transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works and then we'll move to the next transform which is ISO 3166 transform. Now let's see the demo of index of transform. We have already seen the JSON body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I'm going to apply transform to last name attribute. Let's see the output. So you can find the letter B at index 1 in the given string. Let's understand ISO 3166 transform. This transform is used to convert input string into ISO 3166 country code value. Input string must be either a valid country name or country code. If the input does not represent a valid country code, then it returns a null value. We'll be passing country name as input and its country code is returned as an output. Now let's understand this with an example. So if we give United States of America as input to this transform, then its country code US is returned as an output. As we understood ISO 3166 transform, now let's understand how can we build a transform using this operation in the next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format. Where the name of the transform is ISO 3166 transform and type is ISO 3166. The format of the output can also be specified by using format attribute which is an optional attribute. If we do not specify the format attribute then by default alpha 2 is considered. Input is provided in input attribute. Generated output is the country code for the given input. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to the required and optional attributes, type and name are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh, format and input are the optional attributes. The available valid values for the format are alpha 2, alpha 3 and numeric. As we understood about ISO 3166 transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works and then we'll move to the next transform which is last index of transform. Now let's see the demo of ISO 3166 transform. We have already seen the JSON body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I'm going to apply the transform to last name attribute. Let's see the output. So you can see the output is US. Let's understand the last index of transform. Last index of transform is used to find the last index of the specified substring in the input string. If the substring does not match with the input string, then it returns minus 1. If the substring you are searching for occurs multiple times within the incoming data, 
then the transform returns the location of the last occurrence we'll be providing input string and the substring which you want to search for the input is taken either implicitly or explicitly so we'll get the last index of the specified substring within an incoming value as output let's understand this with an example if abc 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 is passed as input along with the substring b to the transform then index 7 is returned as output as the last occurrence of b in the string is at index 7 as we understood last index of transform now let's understand how can we build a transform using this operation in next slide the example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is last index of transform and type is last index of input is provided in input attribute and the substring b is provided to get the index so the last occurrence of letter b is at index 7 so the value 7 is returned as an output now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide coming to the required and optional attributes type name and substring are the required attributes requires periodic refresh and input are the optional attributes as we understood about last index of transform Let's have a quick demo on how this transform works and then we'll move to the next transform which is left pad transform. Now let's see the demo of last index of transform. We have already seen the json body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I'm going to apply the transform to last name attribute. let's see the output you can see the output is 7 which means the last index of substring b in the given input string is at index 7 let's understand left pad transform this transform is used to pad an incoming string with the character specified by the user to the left side of the string we'll be providing input string length and padding character to this transform as a result string is padded with the character specified by the user the number of characters padded depends on the length provided by the user let's understand this with an example so in this example i have given 1 2 3 4 as an input string and the length 8 and padding character 0 to this transform as the output the uh, result looks like four zeros 1 2 3 4 4 four characters are padded to the left side of this input string so the total length is 8 if the input is null then the returned value will be null as we understood left pad transform now let's understand how we can build a transform using this operation in next slide the example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is left pad transform and type is left pad input is specified in input attribute padding character is 8 and the total length is 8 so we can expect the output as 4 zeros 1 2 3 4 4. now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide coming to required and optional attributes type name and length are the required attributes requires periodic refresh padding and input are the optional attributes if we skip padding then by default single space character is used for padding as we understood about left pad transform let's have a quick demo on how this transform works and then we'll move to the next transform which is lookup transform now let's see the demo of left pad transform we have already seen the json body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly so let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output 
I'm going to apply the transform to last name attribute. Let's see the output. You can see four zeros are padded to the left side of the given input string. Let's understand lookup transform. This transform is used to take an input string either implicitly or explicitly and compare it with the key value pairs provided in the table and return the value. If the given input doesn't match with any of the keys in the provided table, then default value is returned, but this is optional. If we did not provide the default key and value and input doesn't match with any of the keys, then it result to an error. Let's understand this with an example. So in this example, I have passed 512 as input. It is checked against all the key and value pairs in the lookup table. Let's assume Austin is the value for the key 512. So it is returned. As we understood about lookup transform, now let's understand how we can build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format. But the name of the transform is lookup transform and type is lookup. Let's assume input is provided implicitly as 512. If I search for 512 in the lookup table, then Austin will be returned. If I search for 200, then it doesn't match with the any of the keys. So default value is returned. Now let's understand what are required and optional attributes in next slide. To required and optional attributes, type, name and table are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and input are optional attributes. As we understood about lookup transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works. And then we'll move to the next transform, which is lower transform. Now let's see the demo of lookup transform. Let's apply transform for city attribute. So before applying the transform, let's see what will be the attribute value for city attribute. So you can see the attribute value for city attribute is 512. Now let's apply lookup transform for this attribute. Now we'll see the attribute value for city attribute. So we can see the attribute value is Austin for the city attribute. Let's understand lower transform. This transform is used to convert input string into lowercase character. Let's understand this with an example. Here, input string active in capital letters is given to the lower transform and it returns the output in lowercase letters active. As we understood about lower transform, now let's understand how we can build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is lower transform and type is lower. Input active in capital letters is given to the lower transform and it returns the output in lowercase letters active. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to required and optional attributes, type and name are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and input are optional attributes. As we understood about lower transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works. And then we'll move to the next transform, which is name normalizer transform. Now let's see the demo of lower transform. We have already seen the JSON body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I'm going to apply the transform to last name attribute.
you can see the output is in lower case. Let's understand name normalizer transform. Name normalizer transform is used to clean or standardize the spelling of strings coming in from source systems. It handles various use cases like proper casing or capitalization of names. Any strings containing either space, hyphen or an apostrophe, this transform splits these by that character and capitalizes the first letter of the resulting substring. Special replacement of patterns that include MC or MAC. So this transform automatically converts these two words to start case as they are part of patronymic last name. So consistent capitalization of the strings that are part of toponymic surname or a generational suffix. Let's understand this with an example. So here in this example, John Dell Smith is passed as an input. Then this string is normalized as John Dell Smith where Dell is converted into lowercase characters. As we understood name normalizer transform, now let's understand how we can build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is name normalizer transform and type is normalize names. So input string is provided without proper casing to the transform. So the name normalizer transform returns the string with proper casing by capitalizing the first letter from every word in the string. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to required and optional attributes, type and name are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and input are the optional attributes. As we understood about name normalizer transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works. And then we'll move to the next transform, which is random alphanumeric transform. Now let's see the demo of name normalizer transform. We have already seen the JSON body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I am going to apply the transform to last name attribute. So you can see the normalized output. Let's understand random alphanumeric transform. Random alphanumeric transform is used to generate a random string of any length. It takes length as input and generates a random string which consists of both letters and numbers. If we do not specify the length attribute, then by default it takes 32 characters. And the maximum limit of giving length is 450 characters. Let's understand this with an example. For getting a random alphanumeric string of length 10, we have passed length 10 as input to this transform. Then a random value will be returned as an output. As we understood about random alphanumeric transform, now let's understand how we can build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format where the name of the transform is random alphanumeric transform. Type is random alphanumeric and the length is 10. So we will be receiving a random string of length 10 as output. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to required and optional attributes, type and name are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and length are the optional attributes. As we understood about random alphanumeric transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works. And then we'll move to the next transform, which is random numeric transform. Now let's see the demo of random alphanumeric transform. 
we have already seen the json body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly so let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output i'm going to apply the transform to last name attribute Let's see the output. You can see a random alphanumeric string is returned as output. Let's understand random numeric transform. Random numeric transform is used to generate a random string of any length. It takes length as input. And generates a random string which consists of only numbers. If we do not specify the length attribute, then by default it takes 10 characters. And the maximum limit of giving length is 450 characters. Let's understand this with an example. For getting a random numeric string of length 6, we have passed length as 6 to this transform. Then a random numeric value is generated. So as we understood random numeric transform, now let's understand how we can build a transform using this operation in next slide. The example which we have discussed can be built in this format, where the name of the transform is random numeric transform, type is random numeric, and the length is 6. So we'll be receiving a random numeric string of length 6 as an output. Now let's understand what are the required and optional attributes in next slide. Coming to required and optional attributes, type and name are the required attributes. Requires periodic refresh and length are optional attributes. As we understood about random numeric transform, let's have a quick demo on how this transform works and then we'll move to the next part to understand about other transform operations. Now let's see the demo of random numeric transform. We have already seen the JSON body of the transform and we have provided input explicitly. So let's just apply transform to any of these attributes and observe the output. I'm going to apply the transform to last name attribute. Let's see the output. You can see a random numeric string is returned as output. 